In this video, we're going to have a look at what we mean by an index and how we use laws to do with indices to simplify algebraic expressions. An index is just a shorthand way of writing an expression. For example, if I had a times a times a, there are three a's being multiplied together using it in index we can put a 3 up here and that 3 simply tells us we're going to multiply the base a together with itself three times. So what are the index laws that we actually apply? Well let me write them out for you because they are very important to learn and you need to memorize them. The first law if you've got bases that are the same like this then we take the indexes and we add them together. Now I'll go through some examples using these and talk it through later, but let's just remember what they are or outline what they are to start with. If we're dividing two numbers with the same bases, then the rule says that we subtract the indexes from each other. So this could be expressed like this, or if we expressed it like this, it's exactly the same thing. The third important law is one where we've got a number with a power, a base with a power, and that power is raised to another power like this. And when this situation occurs, we multiply. The powers together. And finally one special one that we need to look at is when we have a base to an index of zero and the answer to that is always one. So for example if I had 5 to the zero it would be one. If I had x to the zero it would be one. In fact if I had xy in brackets and the whole bracket was equal to zero the answer would be one. So the steps in using the index laws go as follows and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one step at a time and we're going to use a simple example to understand how it works. So firstly we're going to look at writing a number in expanded form. So the question we're going to look at is one that goes like this. We'll take a fairly simple question to start with and that will be 3x squared. So there's our index times 5x cubed. We write it in expanded form first of all, so this is 3 times x squared times 5 times x cubed. It's quite important to write it in expanded form as you'll see later. The second step is to see first of all if it's a fraction can we cancel? Now in this case we haven't got a fraction so we don't need to worry about it but we will have some examples like this in, in a little while. The next question we have, well the next step rather is to multiply and divide the coefficients. So we've got 3 and 5 there, the coefficients. Remember the, the number in front of the letter is the coefficient. So we're going to multiply 3 and 5 together and we get 15. So we'll just leave the indexes as they are at the moment. And the next step is to multiply and divide the pronumerals using the index laws. So you'll notice that the law that we're going to use here is because we're multiplying two bases that are the same, we add the indexes and that will give us then 15 times x to the power of 5. In step 5, we make sure that the coefficient is in front of the pronumeral, and in this case it is. So we've got 15 times x to the 5. And our final step is just to write the pronumerals in alphabetical order in index form. Now we have only got one pronumeral here, so we won't be writing it in alphabetical order. 
because we don't need to. There are no other letters to compare it with. But you'll find in some of the examples coming up that you've got some variations to these steps and you'll see how it works. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. Example number two, we'll use number one as we just did showing the steps. Example number two has got a squared and b and we're multiplying it by minus three a cubed b squared. Looks fairly complicated but it's not too bad. Write it in the expanded form a squared times b times minus 3 times a cubed times b squared. Now there's no other numbers to multiply here so we'll put the number at the front and we'll go through and look at each of the bases and because we're multiplying we add the powers and with b now you'll notice there doesn't appear to be an index there so it's actually a one when nothing is there it has an index of one and we're going to add the two to it there and we can actually simplify this in one step minus three a to the five b cubed let's try our, ne our next example this is going to be a division so we've got eight a to the 12th divided by 4 a squared. Now I think it's always a good idea to write it as a fraction so we're going to do that in this case a to the 12 over 4 a squared. We also write it in expanded form so it's 8 times a to the 12 over 4 times a squared. And you'll also notice that 4 cancels with the 8 and goes in twice. So we can go on now and finish this off because we've got 2 times a to the 12 divided by a squared. And since this is a division, we subtract the indices. So it's 2 a to the 12 take away 2 which gives us a final solution of 2a to the 10. Our fourth example is a division as well. 18x squared y all over 6x. Expanded form, 18 times x squared times y all over 6 times x. Once again we can cancel 6 goes into 18 three times and then we go and apply our rules and we can do that fairly quickly. We've got 3 here. Our x's, now there's a 2 there and remember there's a 1 there so we're going to subtract those because it's a division and we don't have to do anything with the y because there are no other y's. Working this out, we get 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're going to leave it just like that. And then y. And there's our solution. In number 5, we're going to have a look at what happens when we have a number or a letter with a power or an index of 0. Now it's very important here to write this in expanded form. And you'll see why in a moment. But we know that our rule says that anything to the power of 0 is 1. So our solution here is 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 4, which is 7. What about this one, though, where we've got, and we'll call this example 6, where we've got all of 3a to the power of 0 plus 4. Well, in this case, that whole thing to the power of 0 is just 1. So it becomes 1 plus 4, which is equal to 5. So be very careful. Common mistake here is for people to see the power of 0 
and think that the whole thing becomes one when in fact in this case the answer is three for this part of it because a to the zero is one whereas down here the whole thing does become one our final example which is number seven has a look at a power of a power so we've got three a b cubed and then we're going to put it to another power well let's expand inside so this is a times b cubed and the number has to be multiplied with each of the indexes that are here so there's actually a one there and a one there so what we're looking at is 3 to the 1 times 2 times a to the 1 times 2 times b to the 3 times 2 and when we simplify this down we get 3 squared times a squared times b to the power of 6 so this becomes 9 a squared b to the power of 6 Thank you.